Okay, Code fans, we're back. My name is Atlee Hunter, and this is Building Connected Windows Store Applications the Easy Way with Windows Azure and Azure Mobile Services. What we're going to look at here is how to effectively use Windows Azure Mobile Services to handle your data and your user experience across not just uh, several different applications, but also across different platforms and uh, across different um, use cases. We're also going to look at how you can easily and effectively manage and, and use your data and handle your data in, in a mobile services and also utilize things like uh, um, authorization, push notifications, and be able to effectively utilize the diagnostics and scaling of, of your application and services. So what is Windows Azure Mobile Services? Well, it is um, the mobile services layer that allows you to uh, very quickly and easily create a connected experience where you are able to take information directly from your application, put it in the cloud, and regain it very, very quickly and easily with writing almost no code. You can set this up in a couple of minutes as we're going to go and take a look at in a little while. And uh, it's very easy to use, and it's really, really easy to extend and enhance as well. So you start off, obviously, with your data. That's what we're looking to do. We're looking to share, utilize, and, uh, and uh, basically capture and make the most out of the data that the user is uh, basically consuming and or uh, putting into the system. It also contains server logic. You have a lot of uh, different things you can use to handle validation, um, all sorts of uh, different services and, and other things that you can set up and utilize. You also have the ability to authorize uh, using uh, things like Microsoft Live Connect systems. And notifications. You have the ability to, to utilize push notifications across different platforms using their native platform uh, push notification services and uh, basically extend and utilize your application's information to enhance the user experience and to bring the user back into your application. Because when it all ends up coming down to is we want the users to get the most out of our applications and to use our applications the most we can get them to use it. Uh, depending on your monetization uh, model, this can actually be imperative to whether you make money or not. And last but not least, there's scheduler, the ability to set up services and different uh, uh, events that can happen either on the minute, on the half hour, on the hour, uh, over the course of days, weeks, whatever. Uh, it's really, really great effective way to get things happening, get things done in the background so that the information is there for when your user needs it. Then you've also got logging and, dial and diagnostics. So the ability to log errors from your application so that you can better and more effectively find out what's happening, maybe find out what's going wrong, or find out what the users are doing. Sometimes you can utilize the logging to handle things like finding out what the use case is. As for uh, one of my talks that I've done before is this thing about paving the cow paths. You can utilize logging to find out how the users are using your application to better focus on those particular features and, and, and elements of your application to make the application that much more uh, intuitive and uh, uh, attractive to the users. And last but definitely not least, scalability. Scalability is really, really important because the last thing any of us wants to do is have a super famous application that ends up tanking because it doesn't scale properly. The, one of the worst things that can happen in, in some cases is have your application be too popular too quickly and not be ready for it. So what this Azure Mobile Services allows you to do is create um, a very, very easy way to scale and, and handle your user, your user base depending on, uh, regardless of whether it happens just over periods of time, over periods of season, or uh, as, as if it's just generic growth uh, over time. So Azure Mobile Services are awesome for the modern mobile apps, okay? So you've got basically every platform, every major platform is supported. Actually, Android uh, platform support was added just within the last month, uh, which is fantastic news. So it's got full support now, and you can actually go in and we'll take a quick look at that in a, in a few minutes. But you've also got support for Windows Store apps, Windows Phone apps, and I iOS apps. And then you have 
uh, the ability to utilize common scenarios so that you can actually have one common framework so that you can actually reduce the amount of recoding and redevelopment that you're doing to handle the certain similar uh, authorization or uh, tasks and structures, storage and uh, notification services across different platforms. You can handle it all in one place very effectively, very cleanly and very easily with Azure Mobile Services and then rapid development. That's one of the, the big things now is how fast can I get this application up and out there? And for me, I'm really, really all about speed. I'm all about making sure that I can get my code up there, out there, improve the user's experience, give them the most awesome experience that I can, and create the best app experience that I can, but with the best ROI. And part of that is making sure that the speed of development is there and you're able to effectively put out a really, really good product uh, really, really quickly. So what we're going to do is, speaking of that speed, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to create a whole new Azure mobile service in a matter of a couple of minutes. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to my desktop here and I'm going to open up Internet Explorer here and go to whoops, windowsazure.com and I'm going to log into my portal. Okay, so right now I'm logging into my portal because I'm on Windows 8. It's doing all of the, the crazy typing and all the stuff I don't want to do for me. And I bring, come back to my, my main page here for uh, Windows Azure. As you can see, I've got all sorts of stuff going on on Windows Azure. So we're going to go into mobile services here and we're going to set up a new mobile service uh, by going down here and pressing on the new button here. And you're going to see a very Windows 8 uh, Type style menu here where we're going to come up and we've got mobile services here We've got all sorts of different things we can do, but it's already selected everything for us and All we have to do is click create so First thing that we're asked to do is generate a URL So I have to come up with a unique name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do let's see Adley test Development Okay, so I'm going to do an Atli test on developer movement, and I'm going to use an existing instance of my SQL Server database, and I'm going to explain why you might want to do that uh, in a few minutes. I'm going to create a subscription here, and uh, oh, I'm going to utilize my subscription here for Atli test. As you can see, if I have other subscriptions that are available here too, I can also choose to put it on a different subscription if I want to. So. Um, do to do, do the database and mobile service are not in the ma same region. So what I'm going to do is I actually think I'm going to do, uh, do to do, do East US. I'm going to actually create a new database. Um, there we go. Create a new database name. It's going to suggest a name for me that's based on the name of my Azure mobile service, which seems good to me. I'm going to utilize an existing database server, and that's not in the same region either. So let's do this one. There we go. And uh, choose a different one. I have a lot of different servers. I'm going to just make a new one because that's just a little easier to use than. There we go, and this is what they always tell you is going to happen when you're doing demos, but I always say no. I always hate these confirm my password things, but I'm sure they're saving my bacon more times than not. There we go. So we're going to go in and create a new database server. So what's basically happening right now after all of my crazy stumbling around was um, that I'm generating a brand new SQL server, setting up a new database on it, and generating a whole new um, Windows Azure mobile service, which will create a, a RESTful API set that allow me to do standard CRUD operations quickly, easily, and effectively. Now, it's already done and built. I'm done that piece, okay? So when I click on that, I get to go into um, the, um, the console for my mobile service, and you can see that I can choose any platform, and I've got Windows Store, Windows Phone 8, iOS, and Android. Now, one thing to note is 
Azure Mobile Services at this time, as far as I know, is not available for Windows Phone 7 or 7.5, but you can definitely use the RESTful API to uh, build an app, uh, build your application to use that particular API. So it's, it's there's no problem with that. You just won't have the code generated the way it is here, and it won't be using the API the exact same way it is in, on these particular supported platforms. So. If we look at this here, we're going to see choose a platform. So I go Windows Store, Windows Phone 8, iOS, or Android, and you'll see that each one of them actually will give me the information to go get the tools and tell me exactly how to do it and set up the code. So here's for iOS. It tells me how to add my import line to set up my MS client with all the keys and the application URL string and all the stuff that I need. And it'll even give me a sample of my data, and that's for iOS. Um, so what we're going to choose this time, though, is Windows Store, as this is the focus of this particular talk. And what we do here is we go create a new Windows Store app. So we're going to actually create a whole new Windows Store app. We're going to create the ever-popular classic to-do application. So in here, it, you get uh, the, the steps here. You go uh, install Visual Studio Express in case you're brand new to Windows 8 and install the mobile SDK. Well, I've already got both of those installed. And right here, it prompts you to create a table. So I'm going to create a to-do item table. And that table is created and done. And it tells you that we've created the to-do item table. Now I'm going to download and run my app. I get to choose between C Sharp or JavaScript. So HTML5 and JavaScript or C Sharp. So with this one, I'm going to download my, um, my project, and I'm going to save this on the desktop, as all of us do and none of us should do. Um, <laughs> I, always, I, always get, uh, I always comment about people that save everything on their desktops. So um, it's always funny that I end up always doing it in demos. OK, so I'm going to extract this. And I get the project, and I get to open up, and yes, it's going to ask me if I want to connect this. So what's actually happened in the background when I click that button, it's gone through and created a generic test project that has all of the information in it that I need to connect and to run a standard to-do application on my Windows 8 store application. And in that, it's gone into the um, application or the app.xaml.cs, and it's added the static mobile service client uh, connector and gives me basically my URL and my key that I need to use, so the security key that's used. Uh, you can further that particular authorization. Uh, later on, we'll look at how you can do that. And then in my main page, I've got a um, very, very basic concept here. I've got a very basic public class to-do item. And I've got uh, all of that there. And then I've got the code in here that allows me to go in um, and modify and do standard CRUD operations, things like refreshing it, inserting a new one, updating uh, a check to do item, and, uh, and so on. So if we were to actually run this right now, I haven't done anything. I haven't written a single line of code. All I've done is download and unzip something, and this is what I've got so far. So if I add this, I will go test this app, and I'm going to save it, right? And if you see it over here, it's already boom, up and come up. And if we go back to our, if we go back to our Azure mobile service here, um, let me see now. I'm going to go back up to here and I'm going to click on here. I'm back in my portal here and I'm looking at my Azure Test Developer Movement uh, Windows Mobile Service. And you'll see across the top here I have several different things. I have the dashboard, the data, the scheduler, push, identity, configure, scale, and logs. I'm going to go into data and it'll allow me to look at my to-do item table and you'll see that there's already one to-do item in there and it's already pushed that up to the cloud and added that particular line. So that's already added that to do item and it's already said complete. So if I go back here and I check this off and that item goes away and I can actually uh, refresh this table and you can see that now that it's refreshed it, it's shown me that that is now complete. So you can see how quickly and effectively I have an actually functioning start to my app. I, I have something that's connected to Azure Mobile Services running and, and, and fun fully functional, uh, doing standard CRUD operations in a matter of a few minutes, which is absolutely fantastic. This is so much easier than it used to be, and uh, I'm I would be scared if it got any easier, frankly. 
Um, so, but it's an awesome thing to see. So, what we took a quick look at there is, um, is, is the Azure Mobile Services and the storage. So the storage in Azure Mobile Services is structured storage, okay? It's a SQL database storage that's using, um, in the case where you're using a single database, and we'll, we'll get into why that, that might be favorable in a few minutes. But if you're using a single database, it will set up separate schemas. So even if you have the exact same objects in two different applications, and you set up two instances of the same application, you will see them as different schemas. So here you see app X dot to do item and app Y dot to do item. It will separate those out. Now you can also manage your data both in the portal in the SQL portable, portal, sorry, uh, the SQL Management Studio, which is fantastic, and that's one of my favorite things, or direct me through the Rust API. Now, with server logic, you have the ability to go in and do things like validation. Um, you have an automatic server logic set up to do the RESTful API, and so that's already set up there and generated for storage. Um, now, one of the nice things that you'll see, and we'll, we'll go through that in a couple of minutes, is that you have a dynamic schema. So that gives you the ability to um, set up uh, new columns and, and new features in your application and have the Azure Mobile Services just adapt to them and, and, and accept those new columns and create those new columns until you turn it off. If you turn off the dynamic schema, what will happen is from that point on, no new columns will be created and it will actually send back uh, a, a, an error saying that, that that column or feature is not available um, and you'd have to handle that in your application. Now, one of the other nice things is you have an interceptive layer in the in the server logic that allows you to uh, see what's actually happening before either data goes out or data goes in to your application, depending on, on what the the particular uh, request that's being sent to the server logic is. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to properly manage, uh, construct, or validate your your data to effectively show and give the best use case both for your application's uh, um, UX and for your, uh, your, your user's experience. And one of the other really nice things is you have a really, really rich querying capability. There's many different ways that you can utilize and query your data and come up with really, really effective uh, scenarios for data transfer. So, in the supported uh, modules and globals, you have MS SQL logic. You also have uh, HTTP request. You also have console, so that's used mostly for uh, logging. And you also have push, okay, and, and push star, we'll go into, into that a little bit uh, um, and more in, the, in a few minutes. And then you have uh, basically standard table logic. And then you have the ability to set up status codes. So you have the ability to, to pass back status codes so that you can see when something's been accepted or when it's had a problem or an issue. Now, the rest to API SQL uh, mappings, uh, if you look at most of the numeric types at this point, uh, it's, it's fairly basic. So most of the numeric types are all handled under this T-SQL type of float, okay? Booleans are handled by bit. Date time is a date time offset of three. And the string is a, a max and varchar. So um, very, uh, it's a fairly basic mapping. And I, uh, from what I understand, this is going to be expanding and being enhanced over the, the, uh, the next, the coming months. Now, one of the things to note is that right now, Azure Mobile Services is still in preview mode. And so, as that, you will see things will be changing. As 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 uh, I, I found out uh, recently that um, uh, some of the UI modified just a little bit, so it took me a minute or two to figure out exactly where I was and where certain pieces and certain features were. Um, you will find that from time to time, but they've done a really good job of documenting it and letting people know exactly where they can find things and how things are laid out. So, server logic. One of the uh, interesting things that you have the ability to do in your Azure Mobile Services is to set up uh, server logic. So we're going to go. Whoops. Go back into our um, our um, data here and into our table, and we're going to go into scripts. Okay. So sorry, just because uh, I flashed through that. I started off in my um, my Azure. Um, mobile services uh, dashboard here, and uh, or sorry, the uh, the main page here. And I went over to data, and from data I clicked on the table that I wanted to handle the uh, the script operations on, and then I can click on script, 
and I can see that there are several different uh, operations, okay? There's the four standard CRUD operations. And as you can see here, for each one of these operations, I can go in and modify or um, uh, utilize the, the JavaScripting features to be able to set up um, the right validation or the right actions based on what's happening. And this happens before the request is completed. So you'll see here that um, here you have an ID, you have a user, and then you have a request. So you have the ability to, to uh, uh, make all of the uh, specific calls that you need to do, and then at the end you do a request.execute, which then executes the, the uh, initial request, either the delete or whatever else. So in this case, if I decided that I don't want to have uh, the item deleted, if it is newer than uh, a month uh, old, then I could put in logic here that would say, if if um, this particular request contains data that's m newer than a month, then then don't execute, don't don't do this. I can even send back a status request as well. So push notification, push notification is a really really big thing on all platforms. So. Um, it is a really, really great effective way to gain uh, the user's attention, okay? And, and also to give the user quick little tidbits of information that they would otherwise have to go in and open up the application to use. So um, one of the other nice things that uh, Windows, both Windows Store applications and Windows Phone 8 applications offer through push notification is the ability to push new tiles, new live tiles. So you can actually put more fresh information right on their front screen. So, um, what we have here is basically the, the overview of a push notification lifecycle is uh, you start off with your app and then it basically attack, or it's attached to the notification platform for the client. So, in the case of Windows 8, it is the, um, the Windows push, no, or push Notification Services, I believe, um, PNS, Windows Push Notification Services, anyways, um, in... Um, in Android, it, uh, Google's got its own APIs, and Apple has their own APIs for their own push notification service. And the Windows Phone uses a different push notification service than the Windows 8 store applications do. So um, basically, your application would uh, be connected to their applicable push notification services, and then from there, um, they'd start off by requesting a channel URI. That basically establishes a link between that application and that push notification service, so that that notification service says, I'm actually talking to this instance of that particular application. Then what it does is registers with your cloud service once it's received that channel URI to say, okay, here's the information. Uh, this is who I am. This is who I am to the push notification service. Send me the information to this ID. Then once it's authenticated and uh, set up the push notification uh, and verifies that the channel is correct and that everything else is correct. It's set up to then allow um, to push, to notify through push notification. So it makes a, a really, really nice, easy uh, cycle of getting the information to the user cleanly and effectively. And if any of, uh, any of you have ever actually tried to write something that does something similar to this, it can be really tedious and painstaking. So the push notification uh, services that are available now are, are really quite something. So. Push notification integrates with WNS to um, provide the tiles, the toasts, the badges, all of those different identifiers that can modify the tile on your Windows Store application and also raw notifications. They can be utilized to send basically anything you want to to your application, but you have to realize that your application has to be able to be ready to accept that particular type of information and know what it's coming back as in order to properly utilize it. The portal definitely uh, the portal captures your your client's secret and package ID, and then uh, through the push service provides easy way to handle the information back and forth while maintaining uh, safety and abstraction between both the user, the application, and the service itself, so that it creates a very very safe model for sending information. Okay, so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick demo on push notifications. And actually, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go in and take a quick look at our, our, our uh, Azure Mobile Service here. Um, now, if you go back to your, your main page there for your Azure Mobile Service, you'll see that across the top we have several different uh, features, data, schedule, push. So push is the one that we're going to be concerned with uh, at this point. But one of the interesting things that you'll find throughout Azure Mobile Services is the fact that or throughout Azure in, in uh, completely a period, 
um, is that they have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do every single thing, including code examples, code that works, and things that you can just copy and paste and get in and get up and running very quickly and effectively. And push notification is no, no uh, exception to that. So what you do is you go in uh, on your Azure um, uh, homepage for your, uh, your mobile service, and you click on the Learn More on how to add uh, push notification. That'll bring you to a getting started with push notifications and mobile services. You select your, your platform, whether you're using Windows Store C Sharp, JavaScript, Windows Phone 8, iOS, or Android, and it will walk you through step by step, including code tutorials, pictures, screenshots, uh, and, and links on exactly how to get there step by step. So what you can do is you can quickly and easily and effectively go through and set up your Azure mobile service in, in a matter of minutes, okay? And so this one basically walks you through step by step how to get everything done, how to be connected, how to make sure mobile services work. And then once you've, you've done that, you simply run your application and you would get uh, basically, your push notification popping right up when you when you uh, input your uh, your to do item. So I, I urge you definitely to go in, go through those steps. I'm not going to go through them all with you right now because it will take uh, a little longer than we have. We're starting to run a little short on time. So uh, definitely go in, do the test application, go through, add a push notification service to it, and it's definitely something worthwhile trying out. Definitely. So we're going to go back to the slide deck here. And we are going to start talking about authorization. Authorization is a very, very uh, interesting feature that also, along with push notification, can be really used to extend and enhance your application by making uh, a simple user experience. One of the things that's very frustrating with today's uh, new age of connected everything is the uh, having to restore and remember so many different passwords across so many different platforms. So what the answer to that has been uh, basically using uh, authorization from other services. So that way a user can remember one or two uh, passwords for a couple of different services, but then can connect to many different things because they've authorized those other things to utilize those, those services. So you can authorize against your Microsoft account, your Twitter, your Facebook, or Google, which is really fantastic because it wasn't too long ago when you could only use the Microsoft account, and it's already expanded to include Twitter, Facebook, and then Google um, authorization APIs. So one of the nice things that you can do with this is you can set the table level permissions for each individual CRUD operation. You can uh, set them up to be utilized by everyone, which means it doesn't check for any kind of authentication. It doesn't matter what application you're using. It's just it's a free for all. Anybody can go in and do those particular operations because that's what that use case for the application and that data model you know, dictates. Um, the most common one is anybody with the application key. That way, basically anybody who's sending in a request that includes the application key for which this service is, is, is assigned to or, or is attached to can then perform that particular authorization or that uh, particular uh, request or, or um, uh, functionality. Now, one of the other ones that's uh, utilized is author only authenticated users. Now, this would be where you'd authenticate it with another service like a Microsoft Live account or your Twitter, your Facebook, or your Google account or only scripts and admins. So you can actually set it even more granularly than that as well with control server-side script controls. So it allows you to really, really create uh, whatever the experience is that you need for whatever security model best suits your use case and for your business. Okay, next to push notifications, one of the most commonly used features and one of the nicest features of, of Azure Mobile Services uh, extended features is the ability to add authentication through already known providers. So with today's age of having multiple devices and multiple accounts, uh, there are lots for us to all remember and lots for your users to remember. So it's really nice to offer them the ability to authenticate to your, to your application against a known uh, account such as Microsoft account. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a quick uh, demonstration of how to do that and how easy it is with Azure Mobile Services. So we're going to go into our mobile services uh, portal again. And again, as we'd, saw, we'd seen earlier with the, uh, with the push notifications, in the Learn More section down at the bottom here, and depending on whatever platform you're on, you can actually see how to add authentication to your particular platform. So what we're going to do is we're going to add authentication. We're going to click on that, that link, and we're going to get it 
brought up to a just like push notification like getting started with authentication in mobile services you get to choose your platform again as, as we saw with push notifications so the layout is very very similar and again it's going to give you a selection of really easy to follow steps that you can go through step by step along with code examples and all sorts of uh, really easy to follow uh, screenshots uh, to get your application up and running very quickly and effectively. So what we're going to do then is instead of me walking you through it all, I'm just going to show you what the end result looks like. I really urge you to go in, give it a shot, play around with it, test uh, how it works. You can also um, authenticate against Facebook, Twitter, and a Google account as well. So we're going to go back to uh, our project here, and we're just going to run this here. I just want to make sure that I've got everything there. Yep. So we're going to run it, and you're going to see that what you'll end up coming up with is a connecting to service. You see that it's your Microsoft account. So if I log in, uh, if I could spell Hotmail, that would be awesome. And and there we go. So we're going to sign in. It's going to ask me now, do I want to let this app uh, access your account? So what you really want to do is make sure that you do go in and add that logo in there because that will really go a long way towards letting the user recognize your application. So we're going to say yes, and there we go. So you're now logged in. So it tells me that I'm logged in and I can see what I've done, and now I can go in and see my data and see my information. So it's that simple and that easy. Um, it, it works quickly, easily, effectively. It's not a lot of lines of code, and even the lines of code you do have to, to enter, they actually give them to you. So you can go in and quickly update your application to utilize uh, a Microsoft account, a Facebook account, a Twitter account, or, or uh, a Google account to uh, make your application that much more secure without putting an undue burden on your user base. So that's definitely something you want to go in and take a look at. One of the really, really interesting things about running a back-end mobile service and, and something that really becomes important in, in almost every application scenario is the ability to create uh, something that happens in the background, goes and gets information, aggregates data, does what we need it to do, and gets those things done quickly and effectively. It's part of the reason why we use offline servers, because we want to do things that maybe the phone or the, the, the desktop device either isn't powerful enough to do, or we don't want to necessarily have to do it for every single client or every single user every single time. So one of the things that makes that even remotely possible is the ability to do an effective scheduler, okay? So we have the ability here to set up schedulers on schedules by minutes, by days, uh, by hours, by months, and you can execute scripts on demand at any point. So you can actually set up a scheduler to, to go up and, and execute, or you can actually go in and say, okay, now I want to execute that script now. So you have the ability to go in and you know, get new information, clear out old information, make sure that the information is there is properly aggregated and properly laid out and properly utilized so they can create the best and the cleanest and the most effective uh, experience for your user. Because what we really want to do is we don't want to necessarily send tons of extra information the user doesn't need. We want that information to come quick, quickly, cleanly, and effectively. And one of the best ways to do that is to set up a schedule scheduler that basically runs a script and takes care of a lot of that functionality for us. So that brings us to diagnostics. Diagnostics is incredibly important, especially if you want to see how your application is being used, maybe where some of the weak points in the design are, or what the strong points in the design are. It allows you to really see what's running effectively, what's maybe being used more, and what's not being used, so that you can effectively target how your application is being used and what, you, what features you include next. If you see a particular feature is being heavily used, you have the ability to go in and enhance that feature and give even more functionality. And that's one of the really, really nice things that you can find out from your diagnostics. You can also see what direct API calls are being called and how much time those calls are taking. So you can see if you really need to re rework them or if something needs to be modified to make them more effective. Um, one of the other really, really big things, and I'm, I'm really sort of a push on this as well, is to properly log what's happening. Not just logging errors, but actually logging usage. Logging to find out what people are doing, when they're doing it, how they're doing it. Um, are they making uh, a particular two calls particularly together that I can then turn into one call because they really do go together? And that's the kind of thing that we can really, really target and track really, really well through logging. So you can make a much more enhanced, a much better experience for the user. So if I find that after every time users click button X to get, you know, information X, they also then immediately go and get information Y 
then you know what, maybe what I need to do is look at how can I bring those two pieces of information together in the first place. Make that user that much more happy because they didn't have to click another button, they didn't have to find another piece of information. Or maybe I'm preloading all the information when they click button X so that information Y is right there already so they can snap up and show them at, the, at a moment's notice, either in a tool tip or in a flyout or in some other way to really enhance that experience. And that's what it's all about is enhancing the experience. Now, when it comes down to enhancing the experience, you really have to really think about scaling, okay? Like I said, one of the biggest dangers uh, any application can have is being too popular before it's ready. Entire companies have folded because of this. Um, and one of the nice things about uh, all of the different cloud services and Azure Mobile Service and all of the websites and all of the other things that they offer is they all scale fantastically. They scale quickly, easily, and effectively so that you can compete at a level we've never been able to compete at as individual developers and as small to medium sized companies ever before. You can roll something out, test it out, see if it's got legs. If it's got legs, you can open it up so it can run you know, run at full speed. And that's really awesome. And then storage, okay? You can actually scale your storage out. If you find out, hey, you know what? I need a 50 meg database, 100 meg database. And then three months later, you're like, oh my God, 100 megs is just not gonna cut it. I need like a gig, I need five gigs, I need 10 gigs, 100 gigs, whatever you need. You can scale it and set it up so that effectively your users aren't hampered by any changes in what you're doing in the background and also uh, how popular the application is. So we're gonna take a quick look at uh, diagnostics and scale. Um, so if we were to go in and look at uh, the application I was just running. Um, so if we go back into here, and do, 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 not in my table, in my dashboard. Okay, so in our dashboard, I can actually see exactly what's happened. I can see that in the last few minutes, well, basically from 2 p.m. until whatever this time is, uh, nothing's happened. So if, um, if I wanted to go in, I could find out effectively what day, what time I had peaks. If I find out what time peaks are happening, if I find that it's using a lot of CPU time or it's using a lot of data calls, I can effectively set it up so that it can handle that usage when it needs to. You can also see bumps over time so you can see how long things take. You can actually focus just on API calls or on CPU time. So you can click things on or off so you can focus on one piece or another. So it ends up being a really, really nice way to see exactly what what kind of action and what things are happening and you can see what the relativity is over the last uh, 24 hours, six hours, seven days. You can look at different periods of time. Um, it gives you a really, really nice and robust way to see what's happening, uh, both on CPU time, data in and data out. So you've got your graph up here and you've got your scales down here so you can see what's been going on and how, um, how that affects the usage of your application. Now, in logs, okay, you have the ability to go in and see all of the logs and all the different messages that are hap that have happened in your application. And right now, I have no logs. I haven't set up any logs with this particular application. You would end up using your logs to debug your application and also to track what's going on. So. Um, you can find out a lot about your application and about how it's functioning. And sometimes your logs that you keep yourself will be a little bit more effective and a little bit more on point because you can target them a little more specifically than sometimes you can on the general uh, logs that are available on crash reports on the different stores, either through uh, Windows Phone or Windows Store or, or the other platforms. So that ends up being a really, really effective tool and I always urge people to use it whenever they can. And then scaling. So if we look at how um, the scale is set right now, you can see that my mobile service mode is in free mode, right? So right now that means that I'm using one of my free instances. I get 10 instances of mobile service while it's in preview. And, uh, and then um, if I want to, I can switch it to a reserve instance, which I would then pay for. And, and we'll get into how that looks uh, later on. Now, if I looked at, wanted to see here, I could see how it was scaling based on my reserve capacity. I haven't set this up as a reserve, so there's no real data there. But I can also see that right now, um, I have a, basically in the, uh, in the mobile service free mode, I have a small instance with one core, 1.75 gigs of memory, and I know exactly you know, what's going on. Um, in here, I only have the, the one instance, and um, I can also see that in my database, I have a SQL database. It's set to be one gig. I can set it to be five gigs at this point, or I can go 
to a business class one, which could be 10 all the way up to 150 gigs. So um, I'm going to leave it as that because I'm not going to uh, need any more than that for this particular thing. But that basically gives you an idea of how you can start to scale your application, how you can, how you can make it grow, and how your database can grow as well. So, uh, so that brings us to pricing, part of the, 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 the idea of scaling, and you saw the free mode there. What we want to do is uh, explain a little bit about how the pricing works and how this module, uh, how, how this sort of play out. So right now, you have a shared mode, okay? So you have 10 um, Azure, Mo or Azure mobile services that are all running basically on a shared instance. If you decide that you need to pull one off on a, onto a, a separate instance of the server or uh, on a separate database server. As you saw, I put mine on a separate database server just because that's how I wanted to do this particular one. Um, that would end up being uh, the thing that you pay for would be the SQL database. Now, the SQL database, if you look at the cost, it's, it's incredibly low. Um, if you look at what the shared mode brings to you, it gives you 10 applications with unlimited inbound data. So you can take in as much data as you want. If you uh, put out more than 165 megabytes of outborne data per day, um, then you'd have to look at maybe moving that out to a reserved instance. So then that would be a paid instance that you then would uh, pay a nominal fee for the, uh, the data at that rate. Now, uh, 165 megs of data is an awful lot of data if you're looking at mobile applications and how much data you're putting out. Um, so basically what you want to do is make sure that you utilize your data models effectively and clearly so that, again, like I said, using those server-side scripts and using those schedulers, you can modify and, and uh, massage your data so that you're sending out just the data that's needed so that you're not spending needlessly on that hundred against that 165 megs of outbound data. Now in private mode you have a pri or reserve mode you have a private VM so that means that VM is only set and used for that particular instance of your mobile services okay it's a small instance it's the only size available at the time at this moment uh, I'm not sure when and if that's going to be changing. I would imagine that at some point it would probably change. Um, you still have the free unlimited inbound and 165 megs of outbound, but any anything over that would be charged. So basically going to the reserve mode, if you're sitting within that paradigm, you're still not paying anything else, right? You're not paying anything else that you were not paying before. Uh, the only difference is that uh, you have the ability to go over that 165 megs with the excess being built. Now, uh, the SQL database computes uh, is the same reduced rate as websites, so you still get 33% off. Uh, excess outbound transfers are starting at uh, 12 cents a gig. So, and you can have up to 100 applications against your SQL database. So, um, now one thing to note though is that this is in uh, preview mode. So, there is no express service license agreement, and the general availability is. Um, is is 99.9 .9, but they don't guarantee it if you do have a situation or a service that you think that you need to guarantee that you can definitely reach out to your microsoft team in your area and talk to someone on the azure team i'm sure that they can do something to help you come up with an effective model and an effective situation that will handle what you need to make sure that your business is doing what you need and protected the way you need it protected so if, for example, I have 10 mobile services on shared instances, I get unlimited ingress. So that means I can, I, can, I can download as much data to the 100 megabyte SQL database as I want, okay, until my database is full. <laughs> um, now, I have under 165 megs of data going out from my database out to my, uh, my uh, Azure mobile services, either on phone or on um, Windows 8. Now it's 165 megs in total. So if I have an application that's sharing between a Windows phone and a Windows 8 device or a Windows phone and an Android f device and an iOS device, I have to realize that that is um, 165 megs in total. Okay, So I have to be aware of that. It's not 165 megs per platform or per uh, specific uh, outbound call set. It is uh, 165 megs for that particular mobile application service, okay? So, if you were to look at this, okay, your basic, if you were paying for all of that right now, the cost is $5 a month, okay? So that's what your basic, if you went to a reserve mode, that, um, that is basically the cost of that. So, um, 
So the 10 free mobile services includes the 65, 165 megs of free egress from API calls and all the services sharing 100 meg DB is $5 a month on your database. So that is your 10 free mobile services and your cost of your database is roughly $5 a month. Okay. And that would be after the 90 day trial. So if you're starting up your Azure mobile ser or your, your Windows Azure account right now, you would get 90 days free. And then after that, the 100 meg database would cost you $5 a month. And the, uh, the 10 mobile services are still free uh, until the preview uh, is, is over, as far as I, I'm uh, aware. Now, also, there's a pricing calculator on the Azure mobile services site or on the Windows Azure site that allows you to estimate where your costs are. So you can look and see, hey, if I add this and then I do a website here and then all of these things and then I have this database, what's my cost? And it can give you a pretty effective idea of what it's going to cost for you to run uh, all of the things that you need to run in the cloud in the cloud so you can see how it best works for you. So one of the things you got to remember though is if you're an MSDN subscriber, a BizSpark, an MPN member, or a website Spark member, all of that is included for your um, for your um, th those costs are included so you're not paying extra for the database and uh, basically the value of, of those memberships covers uh, uh, a portion of your costs on Azure. So you're basically, if you already have an MSDN subscription like myself, you saw I have a whole bunch of things on Azure, I'm not paying anything extra for that. I'm not paying anything. I have no monthly fee coming from Azure. Um, I'm basically just covered under my, my uh, my MSDN, so it's fantastic. It works out really great. So if you have an MSDN subscription, there's absolutely no reason that you shouldn't jump out, play around with Azure, experiment with it, get some connected apps together. And if you don't have an MSDN subscription, look up, look at getting a BizSpark uh, site or a BizSpark, sorry, um, account and and uh, subscription, and get that set up. Um, even regardless of that, it's $5 a month for the database after the 90 days. So after 90 days, I want you to get working after 90 days, realistically your application should be generating enough that you could cover $5 a month uh, among up to 10 applications that are using the service. So one more, just a, as a recap, what is Azure Mobile Services? It is a really quick, easy, fast, and effective way to stay connected using your data, okay? And putting your data in the cloud, making it available to multiple applications, multiple platforms, and in a quick and easy RESTful API set that you can use on every major platform. It's also great server logic that gives you the ability to validate and or uh, perform certain functionalities such as push notification and other things uh, directly from your, your calls and your requests for your CRUD operations. It's authorization that can utilize your Google authorization, your twi Twitter and your Facebook authorization as well as Windows account or Microsoft account inf information. To, to handle uh, login. You also have the ability to do no notifications on all of the platforms, so you can use whatever notification service properly targets the platform that you're developing for. So it's really nice that you can have all of that managed in one central location quickly, easily, and effectively with all of the code basically written for you. You just have to go in and modify the, the example code. And then you've got a scheduler so that you can modify, massage, and utilize the data to the best of the, your ability and for the best of its ability to properly make your users uh, get the experience that they want. Give them something that makes them feel excellent, makes them feel awesome, gives them the right pieces of information at the right time, right when they need it. Then you've also got logging and diagnostics that allow you to see what your peak times are, what your peak usages are, what things are working properly, what things are maybe having issues so that you can properly effectively stay ahead of the curve and make sure that your users always get that experience that they're, they're expecting. Or if you find out that users are having problems with something, you can go in and quickly and effectively diagnose it so that you can come up with a really, really good way of handling the problem quickly and easily. One of the things that I find uh, from users that I deal with um, I actually had a user um, email me yesterday, said they had a problem with a particular application. Uh, they sent me the information that they had. I was able to quickly and easily affect the, the, the change and make sure that it was handled quickly and easily in the back end so they didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to wait for an update. They didn't have to wait for anything. That made the user really happy. They were so happy that I'm sure that they'll be talking about my app. They'll be talking about the service they get. And that's the kind of thing that you can utilize, especially using the logging and diagnostics. And then last but definitely not least is scalability. You want to be constantly uh, cognizant of 
what your application needs in order to perform it at its peak. You want to make sure that you don't get hit um, with your application not performing at peak because uh, you've got too many users or getting too many calls. You want to be able to properly scale it and Azure really gives you the ability to do that effectively, quickly, and easily at a really, really great price ratio. So, what I want to do is uh, just point you at this uh, Azure uh, tr free trial kit. Ah, tongue-tied. I've uh, been talking for a long time and talking rather fast. So, you definitely got to go out and check out windowsazure.com. If you haven't already signed up, sign up, check it out, get the tools, get the SDKs, play around with it. It costs nothing for 90 days. Get in there, get your hands a little bit dirty. Uh, it won't be too dirty though because they write all the, their code for you and so it's quick, easy, and effective. You could spend uh, an evening while you're watching TV and actually come up with a whole connected app. It's, it's awesome. It's really incredible. You definitely can go out and check out the windowsazure.com forward slash mobile for some really good uh, tutorials and, and samples to try. And you've got a list there of different demos and other things that you can do in different places that you can find things. Also, make sure that you check out dev.windowsphone.com and dev.microsoft.com. And also, don't forget the developer movement, okay, is doing uh, a fantastic, it, it's doing fantastic things. You've got to go in and if you've got an application that you can make use Azure, you'll get pretty much double the points for it. So from, from your 5,000 points, you'll get another 5,000 points just for having Azure mobile services utilized uh, with your application. So it's definitely something you want to take advantage of. I did. I've got a 32-inch 30, TV coming really soon, which I'm gonna, looking forward to playing uh, some Xbox games on. You've got to check it out. You definitely cannot let that go by. Anyways, thank you very much for spending some time with me. Again, I'm Atlee Hunter. You can reach me at Atlee Hunter uh, at, uh, on Twitter, and uh, hopefully I'll be hearing from you. Bye.